Drive. It's your girl, Queen Shan Shan from A Broadcast Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Girls and boys, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. And hunty, tighten up those panties. Our fourth episode. So this is your girl, Queen Shan Shan. And yes, you've heard it. Our fourth episode and I know you're probably expecting Edward to be on the show, but you know what? I fired him. He's gone. He's done. He is now accepting Cobra payments for his insurance. And no, no, he's here. He's my producer. So he's actually here behind the scenes. But this is a solo show tonight because I was encouraged to let the audience know who I am and go more deep. And this is my show. And I'm so grateful for Edward to be my partner in this and my, my co-host, but I need to express who Shannon is, who is Queen Shan Shan and what's her, what, what, what is she all about? And before we get into this, I want to make sure and make sure you guys understand you can listen to me on a lot of platforms right now. I'm so excited. I am officially on iTunes, Google Music Play, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. And this is only the beginning. We're going to be on more platforms. We're going to... Uh, really get us out there. You know, I would love to be on NPR. I got to find out how to get in NPR. So if you guys know how to get an NPR, that'd be amazing. <laughs> We're just getting started. So my passions in life are beauty, travel, food, and culture. And this podcast is going to delve dive into that. But we're going to also dive into some just, you know, things that are pop culture, things that are entertainment and movies, things that are making people think and have a conversation and discuss um, I'm going to be coming in and talk about what's going on in my world. You know, I got a lot of things going on. And, uh, as a single black woman living in Los Angeles, I have something to say, hunty. I have something to say, and we're going to have guests and we're going to have people share their thoughts and their lives and their careers. So it's just going to be a fun thing. And so we're going to get this set off tonight. It is um, our fourth podcast, and we we're just going to do this fun. So have a glass of wine, get your cup of coffee if you're listening to this in the morning, and have some fun with me. Remember my James Charles palette giveaway? Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. And she follows me on Instagram, she follows me on Twitter. She follows me on A Broad Production Facebook page, and that's Paula Pingeli. Yes, Paula, congratulations. You are a grand prize winner of the new James Charles Morphe palette, the very coveted palette that's been sold out three times in the last four weeks. You can't even keep it on the shelves. Morphe can't even keep it on the shelves. So, Paula, congratulations. You will be getting that palette shipped to you tomorrow. Um, write a little burb, let us know how you love the palette and hashtag queen Shan Shan. So tonight's dinner, we always going to feature the dinner of the evening. And tonight I ordered for both of us two different places, but from two different delivery services. Postmates, we ordered from jo Joss Bites, and that's spelled J-O-S-S. -S. Joss Bites, it was Asian-themed, and I guess I really should have taken it for uh, for for salt because it really was a bunch of bites I ordered. I had never ordered from Joss Bites, and it was like two pieces of egg rolls and some coconut chicken dish, and I ordered some... Um, uh, uh, a walnut shrimp and literally it was like two bites. So I was kind of disappointed in Joss Bites. So sorry, Joss Bites, you will not be ordered again. <laughs> um, and then we used DoorDash and we ordered through Gr Gratitude Kitchen and Bar. That is the bomb. Now, I do not know and do not quote me if Gratitude Kitchen and Bar used to be Cafe Gratitude, which I know because Cafe Gratitude is a vegan restaurant. And I know they have a location in uh, Larchmont in LA and they have a location in Venice. So I don't know if, you know, if they changed the names, but I ordered this bomb, bomb vegan bolognese pasta dish. And I ordered that for Edward and me. And I ordered also 
um, oh my God, what was the other dish I ordered? It was, uh, it was, oh, it was this grilled sweet potato and it had this yummy tahini sauce on the side. Oh my God, bomb. I should order that. So you know what? Cafe or I'm sorry, Gratitude Kitchen and Bar. If you're listening to this podcast, Queen Shan Shan is giving you five wigs up, <laughs> five wigs up. And Joss Bites, I'm giving you two wigs up, okay? So, you know what? We're going to talk about what does a broad really mean to me? A broad, it means a lot of things. I am a broad. I'm a woman. You know, back in the day, we were considered broads. Uh, a, a, not a great term to describe a female, but we were, you know, hey, broad, what you doing, broad? Listen, broad. You know, I'd rather be called a broad than a B word, let's be honest. Um, And broad can mean many things to me. To me, broad means independent. It means I I have certain opinions. It means perspective. It means strong. It can mean willing and, you know what, and stubborn. Let's be honest, I am very stubborn. I am always right. So get that through your head. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I am a faulty person like the next person. And I think a broad is going to be a great, I don't know, a, a great uh, landscape for me because I do travel abroad. I have a job, a career. I do sell insurance. I'm an insurance broker. And I have met just all kinds of people in my life from rich to poor to middle income to people who are seeking my services. And I'm so grateful. I've been doing insurance for 10 years. So just to give you a background of where I started, I used to be in real estate in San Diego. I used to live in San Diego and I went to fashion design school. I went to fit Los Angeles. I graduated in 1992 and I thought I was going to be this amazing fashion designer. And when I graduated and I got a job, I was making at that time $7 an hour. And I'm from Ranch Cucamonga, the IE. And I was not going to commute to Los Angeles every day for $7 an hour as a powder maker. So I kind of switched my gears and I got into real estate and I enjoyed it. I was in, I was working for a merger. I was working for a company that did mergers and acquisitions started from there. And I really enjoyed commercial real estate And then I started doing residential real estate. We'll talk into that. My good friend, Stephen Alves. I hope you're listening, Stephen. I love you so much. You and you and Jeff, you and Hefe. I turned into real estate uh, mortgage lending. I did very, very well. But when the market took a dump in 2007, 2008, I found myself out of a job. So, and yes, I, I, you know what? Before even all that, I worked in retail. I, when I was 16, worked for Taco Bell, no, Del Taco. I worked for Sue Plantation. Um, I worked for Lane Bryant. I worked for all kinds of stuff before I really got to the meat of what I really wanted to do. And the funny thing about it is I meet a lot of people who are so scared about their future. And I was terrified about my future. I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I was a failure. And with this podcast, I feel that being a broad, that I have a broad feelings and a broad moods and a broad um, prickly parry things that come in my mind each day. And I, and I, and a lot of people can relate to that, but they don't want to talk about it. Sometimes I don't want to talk about it. And this is a great outlet for me. I went to my therapist today and she's amazing. I'm going to even give her name, Judy Bloom. She's in Santa Monica. Judy Bloom, you're listening out there. You are fantastic. And we talked about, a lot of other things that have, you know, that has been hesitating to me that I've been hesitating to start this podcast. And even though I want to talk about travel, food, beauty, and culture, those are the four things that I want to encompass the podcast about. I want to talk about things that affect me as a woman in America. I, again, I am a single black American, African American female. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm self-employed. And a lot of people come to me and they think that I got it going on. I don't. I'm always working. I'm always striving. I'm always trying to eat healthy and lose weight and back and forth. And when I travel, 
I feel free. When I'm eating something I shouldn't be eating, I feel free. And then I feel obviously guilty about it. When I'm looking at beauty YouTube videos or going to Sephora or Ulta or Macy's or Nordstrom's and buying this palette or buying an eyeshadow or testing out this new lipstick from Pat McGrath, I feel free. When I am meeting people out on the street, going to restaurants and talking to total strangers or uh, part of the travel is learning about different cultures, I feel free. I think I've traveled to about 28 countries so far from Australia to New Zealand to Iceland to Scotland, Ireland, Philippines, um, Singapore, Israel, Slovenia, Croatia, Italy, five times. I can't get enough of Italy. Those Italian men, oh my God, I don't, you know, let's be honest, the Italian men, mm, 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 mm. Why are they so gorgeous? Why are they so pretty? Um, there's still a lot of room out there. There's still a lot of countries I haven't visited. Next year, I plan on going to Maldives in India. That's gonna be my May, May June trip. Um, and then next September, Egypt with Turkey. Those are my goals for 2019. And I look forward to meeting people in these cultures. I look forward to talking to strangers. I just, I, I've never been afraid of talking to people. And I was actually nervous. Let's be honest. I was, I was talking to Ed before Ed, Edward, before we did this podcast tonight. And I said, I'm scared doing this by myself. I'm like, where, I, I do need my Edward, but do I need Edward? Edward always has been the last few episodes, my co-host and my banter partner, my banter buddy, and he's here listening to me. And it's just weird for me to just take on this conversation. And I hope you guys are enjoying this because <laughs> I, to be honest, I'm nervous not having a break or not having someone say, yeah, Shannon, or, you know, I agree to it. It's weird. I'm talking to myself and, and I, and I, I listen to all kinds of podcasts and people who do these solely and individually on an everyday basis. And I admire him because this was nervous. And I, and I have, have, I do have the gift of gab, but to do this by myself, I was like, mm, oh my God. <laughs> so, um, I just thank you guys for listening. And this is going to be a journey. This is a journey for me. This is an exercise for me, if you will, learning about Shannon. Um, we ha all have to face some sort of proverbial mirror. Um, w waking up and seeing it, seeing yourself in the mirror in the morning. I don't like to see myself in the morning. <laughs> I'm jacked up. You know, the lashes are skewed. The wig is off. There's no makeup. I'm looking stank, stank, stank. And I'm like, oh, good God, I got to take a shower and get myself together. But this is a different mirror. I'm looking at a microphone right now, this nice, fancy microphone that Edward bought me for the podcast. And it's just me and Edward in my dining room right now recording. He's doing the editing right now. And I'm like thinking, this is my proverbial mirror. It's not a literal mirror. This is a mirror to look inside myself. If that sounds cheesy, if that sounds like cliche, but it's true. Do we ever look at ourselves? Look, look, look at ourselves. And what do we, are we happy at what we see? I'm going to be honest with you. And most of the people who really, really know me, I am not. And I come off confident. I come off um, independent. I come off uh, strong and, and, uh, strong willed, but trust, I am very insecure being a, I, I have, I have parents who are 78, 79 years old. I have a brother who is, I'm 46. My brother is 43. I don't have any children. I don't, I'm not married. I've never been married. I've been engaged, but I've never been married. And so I think at being 46 years old, it, it, am I done? You know, back in the day in the Little House of the Prairie days, remember Laura Ingalls? Like, if you didn't get married at 16, 17 years old, you were considered an old maid. And I have these insecurities sometimes when I see my friends who are married with kids. Uh, did I miss my mark? Because I was so career oriented, because I wanted to travel the world, because I wanted to explore different avenues of a career. Did I miss my mark? So that proverbial mirror sometimes stares at me sometimes thinking, 
what are you doing, Shannon? Why aren't you married with 5.2 kids and married four times and divorced and all these things? I'm like, well, maybe I'm glad I'm not, I don't have those things because there are people who do envy where I am and who, in, who do, who are um, g- proud of where I've, where I've been because a lot of people don't have the opportunities. So I, what I want to tell you is that I still have another 50, 60 years. God, I don't know. I'll be 100 in, what, in 50 years from now? I'll be 96 years old. And you know what? I'm going to be in Jamaica with a young boy at 46. <laughs> okay? I'm going to be 96 years old in Jamaica with a young boy who's 46. I will be the new definition of Stella gets her groove back. I will have a kicking brand new wig on my saggy bones and my saggy breasts. You know what? I don't know. Maybe at 96, I'll have some fake boobies at that time. Who knows? But um, I don't know. I don't know what, what my future holds. Doing this podcast is a new venture. It's a the social media company that I'm going to start. The so, A Broad Productions social media company. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm brand new, just like I was brand new when I was in real estate. Just like I was brand new when I was doing an insurance, I had no H-E double hockey sticks idea what I was doing. And I'm nervous and I'm scared. I am very vulnerable. I'm telling all my friends, my families, I'm telling I'm telling certain clients, you know, hey, patch in to the, the podcast. Let me know what you think. And I can't force people to listen to me. I can only encourage. And even with that encouragement, I feel weird asking them because I've always felt weird asking people favors. I've always been that person that I did whatever I needed to do to survive and to take care of Shan Shan. And I always made sure my friends and family came first before me. And maybe that's weird. I don't know. But that's also insecurity. That's part of my insecurity is that I never took care of myself. I always took care of the people that was around me. And I had to learn the hard way. And people take advantage of that. So again, that proverbial mirror is something very powerful that I have to face on an everyday basis. And um, it's a wake-up call for me. Food, I, uh, I'm i a big girl. I love to eat. Who You know, we all love to eat. I love to cook. I love to have entertainment parties at my house. You know, uh, um, dinner nights, game nights, which I haven't had all this year because of my travels and my business. I'm going to get back into that back into that in 2019. I want to have my friends over for dinner. I want to have cooking parties. I want to have um, um, game night. And speaking of that, I think I should really definitely do a Oscar game night because I always love cooking. I love to talk. I love to talk about the Academy Awards which is coming up, and. I think cooking for me is also a release. I love to cook in the kitchen and create. I love to make Chinese food. I love to make Italian food, Mexican food, and of course, soul food. And I get my cooking skills from my mother. My mom is from Mississippi. She was born in Mississippi, but raised in St. Louis. And then she moved to Los Angeles with her, with her sisters and her brothers and her mom. And so I love to cook. So if you guys have any recipes, send them my way. I love, love trying new recipes. And I want to get back to cooking healthy um because i've been eating poorly this year you know when you travel around the world you <laughs> you tend to eat obviously the delicacies of the of the countries and you just eat like crap and then you take that habit you got on the trip and you take it with you at home so definitely want to go back to healthy eating in 2019 beauty i was always obsessed when i was a girl with makeup i don't care I don't care what you, you know, I was obsessed with Naomi Campbell. I was obsessed with Cindy Crawford. I was obsessed with all the supermodels because I loved how they did their makeup. And that carried on with me to this day. Um, Shopping for makeup is therapeutic for me. And I'm so glad to see men in makeup. You know, we have an opportunity where James Charles and Manny MUA and Jeffree Star and Thomas Halbert and um, Gabrielle Zamora and Patrick Star, all these young men who are less than 30 years old, who are millionaires because they love makeup. They started mostly as makeup artists. And believe it or not, the Jeffree Stars and the Manny MUAs and the Patrick Stars, they started at MAC Cosmetics. Why? 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 Why?
makeup or beauty is therapeutic for me or shopping for makeup is I it, I, th <laughs> I think it actually ties into part of my insecurity of, of realizing who I am without makeup uh, I, I, I find myself getting older and noticing flaws on my skin, flaws on my face. Um, I've uh, scars on my body from previous surgeries and I want to hide that. Makeup and, 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 and the, the world of beauty, we are hiding behind a mask. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Why do I put on a fresh face makeup before I go to work? Because I want to do, I do want to look professional. I do want to look nice in front of my clients, but I can't see myself going out the store without any makeup. Why? I mean, is that a, is that an issue where I can't be natural? And I envy, Ooh, do I envy women who I see outside with no makeup because their, their skin is flawless. I wish I was like that. I've, I, I had a haircut today and I cut my hair really short. And uh, because I'm going to Cuba next week, it's going to be freaking hotter than hell. It's going to be hotter than H-E double hockey sticks in Cuba. So, so looking forward to that trip. But I don't know if I'm going to be wearing a lot of my wigs. And so I'm going to be, and I don't know if I'm going to wear a lot of makeup because I'm going to be sweating balls out there. So I'm a little nervous about being, you know, Queen Shan Shan with no makeup and no wig. Again, a mirror that I'm nervous to face. And I think we all have those mirrors. Um, I love makeup, don't get me wrong, but am I hiding against or hiding behind the face of makeup? I probably am. I probably am. Even when Edward coming here, I had no makeup on the day and I was like, oh, should I put on some face makeup for Edward doesn't give an F. He don't give an F, but I do. And it's about, you know, my mom was always raised me and my brother to look presentable when we were in front of guests. She's from the South. That is the Southern way. You brush your teeth, you wash your booty, you put on a face of makeup, put on a face or a, a lippy or a little bit of mascara and you look presentable. So with that, with that way of life or being brought up that way, I am, I feel like I now to be, I need to be like looking like I'm going to the prom every day, you know, and that's, that's shameful, but not to down low my beauty world, like my love of beauty. That is an interesting concept that, or an interesting thought that I've always you know, pondered, why do I love makeup so much? Is it because I love just the colors or just looking pretty? Or am I, be, am I hiding be something, hiding behind something? Miss Judy Bloom, my therapist, you got a lot, we got a lot to talk about in 2019. And culture. Uh, we are living in a very tumultuous uh, type of culture right now in America. And I'm not going to get into politics. We're not, you know, we're not going to talk about the red. We're not going to talk about the blue. But this is a very interesting culture we're living in, and it's very divided. It's divided politically. It's divided racially. It's divided by men and women and gay or straight or trans. And I was raised, I was very raised, I was, I was raised, I was very raised. I was very fortunate to have parents who are open to welcome diverse in the family. Um, my, 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 my parents were born in the forties, you know, they, they dealt with, um, segregation. They dealt with prejudice. They dealt with, um, if you're not this particular way, you can't get a job or you can't make this much money or you can't drive this car. You can't go to this bathroom. I can't even imagine. I was watching, speaking of that, I was with my girls last week or two weeks ago for the summer party, our annual summer party. And we were watching, and I'm super late to the game. Sorry, don't yell at me, but I'm super late to the game. When we watched Hidden Figures, the movie Hidden Figures, okay? I know it came out two years ago, but I was, I'm was i late to the game. We watched that movie, and I just, I love old movies, and I just can't imagine that someone's telling me that I can't go to the toilet, like the, everybody's toilet. I can't go to the, the bathroom. I have to go to the colored people's bathroom. I have to sit down and like go to the bathroom. No one's going to tell me what, because I'm black or whatever with color skin and and it's so funny and sad i shouldn't say funny it's actually very sad i was um i listened to the breakfast club there's a podcast called the breakfast club that i listen to on a regular with Charlemagne the god and Sh and angela yee and dj envy and um they had this guy named vic mensa he's a rapper and he was talking about palestine 
Palestine, Palestine, whatever you want to, however you want to pronounce it. And in the palace, in the Palestine, um, you know, if you're in Israel part that they, they can't go use regular bathrooms. They got to go to the Palestinian bathroom or there's no, they're, they're segregated now. And this is 2018. I am completely, wasn't completely unaware of that because I went to Israel and it was, you know, we were, we were treated, we were tourists. We were treated very friendly and obviously we went to Bethlehem and it was a true difference from Jerusalem to Bethlehem, how the, 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 the architecture was different. It was very poor Bethlehem. They opened up the gates, let people in and they closed them for a while. And they're the, the, they're, they're Christian Palestinians over there in Bethlehem and they're, they're struggling. But Vic Mensa was talking about how they were, there was this big water type of uh, um, uh, water filtration system. And it wasn't really filtering water because he said there was worms in the water. A, a hundred, year, hundred yards over, there was this beautiful lakes in Israel, you know, lakes or ponds, and it was clean, gorgeous, green water and everything. That's where the Israelis were. He's like, he couldn't believe it. So. I, to this day, the segregation still exists in this world, maybe not in America, but in other countries. And I just, again, cannot imagine someone telling me where I can go to the bathroom or where I can eat or where I can shop. So these are part, this is part of the culture that I'm talking about. When you travel, and it doesn't matter if you can't travel to Israel or you can't travel to Slovenia or you can't travel to Italy, you better travel in California because California is a gorgeous, gorgeous state. And you will find culture. Edward, on our first podcast, said in L.A., in L.A. alone, there are 224 countries represented in our little in our little city. There are 16 million people living in Los Angeles. There are 224 countries represented in Los Angeles. So don't go and tell me you can't go and escape for a couple hours because you can't afford that. You know, you can't afford Italy. You know, go to an Italian restaurant down the street. Go to a Sicilian restaurant in your neighborhood. Go to an Armenian restaurant. You know, we have a million Mexican food restaurants, but go try something new. That's culture. That's what I want to to convey. Share your culture. Share, open your door, open your thoughts, open your mind, because I always came from an open-minded uh, background, and I'm here to encourage that for everybody. Encourage opening your mind. It's not just black and white, blue and red. Is it that time right now? Is it time for a commercial break? Okay, well, let's get into it, girl and boys. I, like I was talking about getting my skin done, get my skin did, and my eyelashes. You have got to check out my girl, Latel Arbib. She's in the Grove area off of Fairfax. Latel, she spells her first name L-I-T-A-L. Her last name is Arbib, A-R-B-I-B. She does eyelash extensions, waxing, skincare, facials, the whole barb. She can be reached at 323-704-6886 or on Instagram at Latel Arbib. Once again, her phone number is 323-704-6886. Tell her Queen Shan Shan sent ya. Hunty! Well, I'm with Tasha right now. Really? Interview for the podcast. What are your thoughts about today? Um, I'm really excited to be at Lambeau. Uh, we need a little bit more energy, sis. I can't do it. There's too many people around and I'm embarrassed. <laughs> sis, when are you embarrassed? Oh my God. Joe, are you excited for today's game? Gotta pee. You gotta pee. <laughs> need gotta a beer. Pee. Need a beer. We are excited. Our first, uh, well, this is my first trip to Lambeau Field, and this is Tasha's second. Second. And why do you love the Green Bay Packers? Say it. Preach it loud. Um, I love that they are owned by their fans. Yes. And that they have such a rich and storied tradition, even when they suck. I don't you know. can bring that out. <laughs> yes, you and I, it. my inspiration is Vince Lombardi. What, you're a girl, you love football, why are you here? Um, I do a podcast, yeah. so why are, you, why are you here? Can I just say you look fabulous? Oh, thank you. You look beautiful at Lambeau Field. I love you. <laughs> Thank you, you're sister. Looking good. I'm wearing Carhartt, and you're just happy. You look great too. Well, I live in California. Kid. They don't have Carhartt out there. I love the Packers because I like Lambeau Field being outside. I like uh -huh. the frozen tundra. Yes. And I love the loyalty of the fans. Right on. Right Keep on. Keep it going. Woo! That's right, sister. Go Pack Go. Go, go Pack go. go. And that was 
my little interview, my little impromptu interview I had with Tasha and Joe, we just came back from a very whirlwind trip to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Yes, girl, you heard me. Green Bay, Wisconsin. I am a big Green Bay Packer fan. And we went to see the Green Bay Packers win. Yes, Lord. Yes. They won against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, was it 34 to 20? So it was a good game. It wasn't like, you know, they gave us the game. We had to fight. And uh, I was there to witness it. And Tasha was there. And Joe, she lives in Wisconsin. And I met uh, Tasha and Joe two months ago in Slovenia. Again, again. Why do I love to travel? I meet amazing people in my life. I've met so many amazing friends in my travels. And these two girls, we were, we hung out in Slovenia and Croatia. We found out we loved the Green Bay Packers and where they were from and blah, blah, blah. You know, Joe, Joe lives there in Wisconsin now. And then uh, Tasha lives in San Diego. And like I said in last week's podcast, San Diego has a huge Green Bay Packer following. So you're going to ask me, why do I love Green Bay Packers? And I explained it last week's episode that I loved Vince Lombardi. I loved what he stand for, what he stood for, because he was a coach on and off the on and off the, the, the field. But I experienced the frozen tundra literally four days ago. And I was excited, but we flew in Saturday night. We had a little house from Airbnb. Hashtag Airbnb, I hope you're listening. Uh, would love some free lodgings, free places to stay. Um, it was a cute house. It was a family that actually lived on the premises. They had this gorgeous, gorgeous, huge house for them. And they had a second guest house for us. And it was a three bedroom, one bath house. Super comfortable. And we the game was Friday, or sat, I'm sorry, Sunday afternoon. We tailgated a little bit, started drinking up. And I met some really f- cool people. We were in line and, and we just had a great time. It was freezing cold. It was 28 degrees sunny that day. Thank God it was sunny because I don't know what would happen, but it was cold and the place was packed. And what I realized about Midwest people, or at least the people we met in Green Bay, the nicest people, so accommodating, holding the doors for you, saying hello, saying good morning, saying good afternoon. Just listen to what these guys had to say and how excited that they were. We were in line with these guys. Just listen. I do a show, and that's about all kinds of things, travel, sports, food, and culture. Why do you guys like the Packers? Are you from here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. Woo! And what is your inspiration, and why do you guys come, keep coming to the game here? Even where the, it's a crappy season? Uh, the environment, the, the environment. The environment. Everyone's in it for the same reason. Yeah. Ooh, see watch the Packers out. win. Yes. Um, what else? Because we love the Packers. Love the Packers. Yeah. The Packers. yeah. 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 See, see Rogers throw a few touchdowns. Green and gold, baby, all the way. All the way. Good. Thank you. Yeah. All right, boys and girls, broads and broad broadens, if you want to call it. We're going to wrap up this uh, solo show for, for the day. Um, we are heading into 2019. It's going to be a brand new year, literally in two, in lo- in two weeks, less than two weeks. And um, this is my goal for 2019 is to keep it going but take it up to another level and i'm excited for this journey you better set some goals for yourself people you broads set goals for yourself in 2019 just don't skate by have an amazing holiday love your family be safe kiss your men, your ladies, love your children. Thank you so much for listening to Queen Chan Chan. I really appreciate your time and your support. At this point, I want to say thank you to my broads and future broads. You can find me on Instagram at Queen Chan Chan, Twitter at A underscore broad underscore broad, on Facebook at a broad productions that's one word you can also email me for sponsorship opportunities at a broad productions at gmail.com tune in next week for a brand new show with sizzling topics new tea and a new perspective